Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris. Bronica ETRS cameras. Fantastic 645 medium format cameras. Can't recommend them enough. But the youngest you'll find is going to be at least 20 years old now. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're buying second hand. Um, I want to spend a few minutes now just going through the essential checks that you need to make when looking at lenses, bodies, backs and viewfinders. Okay, first thing to mention, fundamentally, very, very reliable cameras. That said, Bronica, as a company, went out of business in 2003, 2004, roughly, so spares haven't been available for quite a long time. Now, if you buy one of these in decent condition, it's going to cost you £500, at least. Um, if it develops an electronic fault, the camera might become a write-off. You should know that, you need to know that, buying this old equipment does have an element of risk. That said, as a dealer I can tell you that the most likely thing to fail on these is going to be the electronics in the, in the body. Um, if you buy a nice one in a nice condition, uh, they're not likely to be worn, um, so the lenses will, will be good, the backs will be good, the viewfinders are generally very good. It's the electronics in the camera you have to watch. So if you do spend 500 pounds plus pounds on one of these cameras and the body fails, it's not great, but you know, it's not the end of the world because the lens will be fine, the back will be fine, the viewfinder will be fine. All you'll need to do is just replace the camera, uh, the camera body itself. But do, if you're buying these, bear that in mind. Um, okay, so what, 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 do you need to, what do you need to look out for? Now, f fundamentally, what I say is focus on three things. Focus on the cosmetics, focus on the, the mechanics and the electronics, just make sure things are obviously working, and focus on the glass, focus on the, um, on the optics. And if you can get a clean bill of health in those three areas, then the camera you're looking at will probably serve you well for a long, long time to come. Okay, so for, first of all, look at, the, um, look at the cosmetics. Now, don't forget these were, are professionally used cameras, so, what you want to do is to avoid something that's been really, really hammered. While they were aimed at the professional market, there were still many, many enthusiasts that bought these. And it's really an, an ex-enthusiast camera you want because they tend to be, they tend to be well cared for. Just, just look at the condition. Have a look at the lens. Look around the, the filter thread on the lens. Just make sure there are no nasty dings there. Just, just look at the amount of wear on the focusing on the lens and the, um, the aperture ring on the lens. Just make sure it doesn't show excessive amounts of wear. This black paint does, um, does wear and you'll see metal showing through underneath if, it, if it's been if it's been used a lot obviously have a look at the back at the, the base of the camera I mean you, you might see some little some little parallel marks there when this has been on and off a tripod quite, quite common a few marks not an issue you don't want it massively marked have a look at the bottom corners have a look at the top corners here and here and the corners here and the corners on the back here and all around here, just to make sure there isn't excessive metal coming through. Quite common to see a little bit of metal coming through, that's not a problem, make sure there isn't excessive metal coming through. And check the corners of the viewfinder, just make sure it's not had any knocks. These are quite, these are quite heavy cameras, and if you were to knock that, you'd dent it quite easily. Just, just check the corners, just make sure there are no nasty knocks there. Something also very important to check is, dark slide in, back off, and just check the, um, check the amount of wear here. Now when you put these on and off the camera and you have to hinge the hinge the back into these two top locating positions. So inevitably you do get some metal showing through there. This one is remarkably clean, but if you see an excessive amount of metal coming through the black paint there and there, it's a sign it's had a fair use, a fair bit of use. Now Yes, they're professional spec cameras. Yes, they're designed to be used professionally. But if you want something that isn't going to be worn from a mechanical perspective, then you're best off finding something that shows that shows minimal wear. Also, just um, just just wind the uh, wind the shutter on. If there's no film in the back. Put the multiple exposure lever on. That'll fool the camera into thinking there is a film in the back, which allows you to wind the camera on and then take the lens off. That's the lens release there. Take the lens off and just make sure there isn't excessive wear on the lens mount there or excessive wear here. Once you've satisfied yourself that it hasn't been 
abused, hasn't been overly used. Then I'll just move on to the um, to the mechanics. You've, you've checked the cosmetics, now move on to the mechanics, the electronics. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the most likely thing to fail on these is the shutter timing. Put a battery in. The battery goes under this little plastic cover here. It's a, it's a PX28 battery. And first of all, just make sure that the battery check is working. Now in the view, you push this little button here and it'll light up a little LED in the viewfinder, which I'm sure you probably can't see, but there is a little red LED in the viewfinder. Push that button in, hold it for about eight or 10 seconds, and just make sure that that LED stays nice and bright. Now, if the camera is beginning to, if the battery is weak, or if the, uh, the timing is beginning to go on these cameras, what you'll find is that it randomly uh, reverts the mechanical speed. Now, the mechanical speed on these cameras is 1 500th of a second. So if the, if the electronics are failing and you're using on a, on a quarter or an eighth or a 30th or a 60th, it'll suddenly just revert to a 500th. If you're using it on one second, two seconds, uh, half a second, you'll spot that from the, the tone of the shutter. If you're, you're using it on the higher speeds, you won't spot it. So that's something to keep an eye open for with these cameras. But anyway, to, to check the shutter, stick it onto an eighth or a quarter of a second, wind the camera on and fire it. You'll hear click, click. Just make sure that you do hear click, click. Fire it again and again and again. 20, 30 times. Maybe take it from a quarter of a second to an eighth of a second. Obviously it's going to be a bit faster. You can hear the shutter timing there is doing its job. If the shutter timing was faulty, after 20, 25, 30 repetitions, it'll just do this. It'll just go a single click. That's the camera now firing at a 500th of a second. It's reverted to its mechanical speed. So if you're firing on a 15th or an eighth, It'll go click, click. Let's take it on a bit slow, maybe to a quarter. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. If it suddenly goes click, that's a timing issue. Walk away from the camera. They can't be fixed. You can't get the spares. So that's the most important thing to check from a mechanical and an electronic perspective with these cameras. So make, make, make sure that's working all right. Um, on the lens, make sure the focusing smooth make sure that the aperture is smooth. These, sometimes the aperture can get very stiff if they get knocked or, or if they get heavily used, the aperture mechanism can be very stiff. If it's very stiff, then I'd, I'd recommend avo avoiding it. Wind the camera on. You can just look into the lens, uh, set it on a f22 and just fire the shutter. You'll see the shutter is opening and closing and you'll see that the, the aperture is, is shutting down. You can use the depth of field button just to make sure that the, the aperture is closing down and opening up as it should be. It's unusual to see a sticky aperture on these, a uh, sleepy aperture on these, but you do, you do occasionally. So if, if, it, if it's doing that, opening up and opening and closing nice and, uh, nice and positively, you know that the, uh, the aperture mechanism is good. Make sure the focusing smooth, you know, the focusing me mechanism is good. Check on infinity and make sure it focuses at infinity. And that's a good sign that it hasn't been knocked or it hasn't come out of alignment. If you put it on the camera and you focus on infinity and it goes beyond infinity or doesn't go as far as infinity, there could be an optical issue with the lens. Okay, so you've checked the cosmetics. You've checked that mechanically and electronically it's doing its job. The last thing I'll check would be the optics. Now this is actually very important because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you would never see optical issues with Bronica lenses. They're, 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 they're very, very good. In all honesty, they, they seem more reliable than German lenses, which is remarkable, remarkable given that they're sort of half the price. In the last 10 years or so, more issues have started to become apparent with these lenses. Take, take the lens off and have a look through. You wanna look through and to make sure it's nice and bright and clear inside. Make sure there's no misting. Make sure there's no fungus. I'll stick a link up to tell you how to identify fungus. Basically, it looks like little spots with spidery legs growing out. If you see fungus in the lens, just walk away. It's horrible, but have a look at the video. It'll explain more. So make sure it's clean inside. Have a look at the front element. Have a look at the back element. Make sure they're clean. A few little scratches, a few little coating marks. That'll impact the value, but it won't impact the, um, the optical performance. A few little marks will make no difference at all in use, but if, if it is marked, you shouldn't be paying top dollar for it. 
So make sure the lens is clean inside. Have a look at the mirror, make sure the mirror's clean. Uh, then, again, you might get a few cleaning marks, that's quite common, but you wanna make sure there are no spots of fungus on there. You wanna make sure there are no nasty, nasty heavy scratches. Then just take the viewfinder off, push the little button in there, pull that back and have a look at the screen. Now the screen on these things is interchangeable. It's plastic and it's marked very, very easily. So it's becoming really hard to get a screen in absolutely perfect condition. So you might have to compromise and you might have to put up with a few little marks, but just make sure it isn't excessively marked or, or heavily marked. You can see it's quite a big screen. If, if you're putting a viewfinder on, you're not really looking what you're, what you're doing, it can actually be quite easy to hit the screen with the viewfinder and actually leave scratches. So do, do check the screen. So check the screen, check the mirror, make sure they're clean, check the lens, make sure that's clean. Hopefully the optics have passed. So at this point you've, um, you've checked the, uh, the cosmetics, you've checked it hasn't been abused or misused, you've checked it mechanically and electronically, you've checked the shutter timing, uh, you, 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 you've checked it's all feel smooth, you've checked all the lens, the focusing's good, the aperture's good, and you, you, you've checked the glass, you, you, you've made sure there's no nasty, no nasty fungus, no nasty fault in the, in the lens itself. As I said, obviously put a test film through if you can, um, but if, if you've done those checks, and if you've got a, a clean bill of health in those, in those areas, you can, be, you can be confident you've got a good, reliable camera. If you're buying off eBay, if you're buying from a dealer, obviously try to get a return a return option if you can. That'll give you a chance to uh, just try the thing out and just, just satisfy yourself. It is, in, it is in tip top condition. Okay, well I hope that's useful. If you've got any comments, please um, stick them in the box below. Otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, bye bye.